All right, let's begin with the presidential race and concerns about election security. Over the weekend, the Trump campaign claimed it was hacked and it appears to be blaming Iran. Meanwhile, a New York Times Siena poll shows Vice President Harris leading Trump in three battleground states. She has a four point advantage in Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. The vice president visited all of those states last week on her battleground tour with Governor Tim Walls. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns is covering the campaign's movements for us. She's in our Washington bureau. Caitlin, so good to have you on. You know, last week, Harris and Governor Tim Walls teamed up to do the battleground state tour. This week, he's solo for a lot of the events. How are you seeing the campaign begin to utilize him on the trail? Yeah, Tom, always great to see you. Well, this is going to be Walsh's debut as a solo campaigner, and the campaign is actually having him focus on fundraising. So he's going to be in a variety of different places focused on fundraising. But notably today, they announced that he's also going to be speaking to union members, the biggest public sector union uh, out in L.A. when he's out there fundraising. And that's significant because uh, he was a former union member himself while he was a public school teacher. And this is the campaign's way of also trying to kind of show this contrast or at least kind of compete uh, with similar workers that the Donald Trump campaign is also trying to vie for. So this is where we're going to start to see kind of these uh, contrasts between the vice presidential candidate Tim Walz on the Democratic side with uh, with J.D. Vance on the Republican side. Yeah, all eyes will certainly be on Tim Walz. And also tonight, all eyes potentially could be on Trump. Uh, Trump is set to have an interview with billionaire Elon Musk on X. Last time, Musk tried to hold a big political event on X. As you may remember, it was the announcement of Governor Ron DeSantis's campaign. It was met with technical difficulties. Are there concerns there could be a repeat of that? And what do you expect to hear the duo speak about tonight? Yeah, Tom, I'm having flashbacks to trying to cover that announcement uh, that was, uh, you know, we all know how that went. Uh, this is significant, Tom, because Donald Trump, remember, has been, you know, not on Twitter or X, as it's now called. Uh, he, his account was suspended after the January 6th attacks. It was reinstated shortly after Musk took over Twitter and rena renamed it X. Actually, the last post we saw from Donald Trump on this platform was a mugshot that he posted exactly exactly almost a year ago after he was indicted uh, in Fulton County. So it's significant that he's choosing this platform to do so. Uh, Musk is a big supporter of Donald Trump, not only in support, but also financially. Uh, and so this will be a friendly kind of interview, but also uh, a way for the Trump campaign, they believe, to speak to audiences outside of kind of mainstream media audiences. So we'll see whether, in fact, it actually works technically. And and also what this interview uh, does for the campaign. Remember last week at a press conference that I was at in Mar-a-Lago, uh, the former president spent about an hour uh, talking to reporters, but also issuing a lot of grievances and going kind of off message. Uh, and this campaign, you know, wants the former president to focus on the economy and the border. He didn't really do that last week. We'll see kind of what he does today. You know, Caitlin, one thing he did focus on, though, was crowd sizes. He harped mm -hmm. on it. And over the weekend, Trump claimed photos of crowds at Harris's rallies were AI generated. This is obviously not true. CBS News crews were at each of her events over the past weekend. Do we have any sense, though, of why the former president is claiming this? Yeah, I think there's two ways to think about it. First, uh, this is a candidate who is pretty uh, disappointed in the state of the race right now. I mean, three weeks ago, when we were covering the Republican National Convention, uh, he was kind of at an all-time high and kind of poised uh, to, to potentially win this thing with Biden as the opponent. Everything has changed, Tom, as you know, and we see that in polling. And so uh, the former president, you know, just on the surface is uh, mad about that, essentially. Um, and so that's one thing here. Another important thing to consider, though, is that uh, we need to be kind of paying attention to these kinds of messages that he's sending out, because this could be kind of laying the groundwork to question the results of the election. We're still very far out in terms of what can happen between now and then. Uh, but the 
the former president has been casting doubt on the process already. Uh, he's been saying that it's not only unfair but unconstitutional that Kamala Harris was swapped out for Joe Biden. Quick fact check there. It's not unconstitutional at all. Uh, but we're seeing him kind of uh, put these, these little nuggets out there. And so kind of in the aggregate as we're watching this, um, he's, he's kind of framing the election as unfair at this point. Uh, but this is a campaign that, you know, has seen the other side um, really rev up. Uh, the Trump campaign's own polling shows that the Democrats have been successful since Kamala Harris has taken over as the nominee, the presumptive nominee, in really rallying the Democratic Party base. And in a base versus base election, that's a significant development. Caitlin, Caitlin Huey Burns with one of the busiest jobs in news as we head into the election season. Caitlin, thank you so much.